Hey, what's going on? It's Lane Stone. And Scott Second. We are live on April 21st, coming to you remotely. That's right. Another episode of SNL. And today we're going to talk about one question. And it's the question that we get asked more than any of the others. And what do you think that is, Scott? Uh, no, of course, I don't have to think about it. It's how's the market? How's the market? We always get asked that question, whether we're dealing with a COVID-19 situation or not. We're always asked, how's the market? So we're happy to bring you bars, charts, information, whatever you need to keep you in the loop on how everything's going from a standpoint of inventory, actives, homes going under contract, pricing, how things are affecting the local marketplace here. Absolutely. And Lane and I were just talking as we were preparing for the call that everyone processes information differently from bar charts to up and down graphs to pie charts. So we hope we present things in a way that makes sense for you. But if you have any questions whatsoever, please, you know how to reach out to us after this call. We're always here for you and want to make sure we provide information in a way that's easy for you to disseminate it. Carry on, Lane. So what we're going to do is we're, I'm going to share my screen and we're going to, one of the first websites we're going to go to is actually our hub for all things uh, real estate market related. It's sackandstoneteam.com slash coronavirus. And my guess is after we're done with the coronavirus situation, we're still gonna keep people informed as to what the stats are. And so we're probably gonna change that domain at some point, but for right now is people are definitely asking us constantly, how is the current situation affecting the marketplace? So that domain makes sense for us. So um, without further ado, let's share the screen here. Here we go. Let's start here. So this is uh, absolutely. Yeah. So this right here is our landing page, our hub. Uh, we're going to start with real estate and the economy. Here's a couple tiles that we made here. One it's really interesting because what we're trying to push is that if, if we do go into a recession or whether some form of a correction, it doesn't mean it's going to be the same as the last one we experienced when it pertains to home values and what's going to happen in the real estate market. Experts are actually saying that real estate might be the best uh, uh, source to get us out of any potential re recession. And let's explain why. So these tiles might help start off with that. Uh, Americans are sitting on tremendous equity. Scott, I don't know if you want to read the next one. Well, absolutely. 53.8% of all homes in America have at least 50% equity. And a lot of people are making comparisons to 2008. That was when everyone was much more highly leveraged equity numbers were way down. So I would like to just say we do not want to make a comparison to right now to 2008. It was a completely different time with completely different underlying dynamics. Yeah, it was really nice to know that a lot of Americans have equity in the homes that might help them weather a storm of a potential slowdown. Um, Absolutely. Because the next one here, 30% of all homes are owned free and clear. So that's more than a third of homes in America are owned free and clear without a mortgage. It's a surprising stat, isn't it? I mean, we always think everybody leverages, but you know what? Americans have really gotten a little bit more conservative and a little more smart with their money in the last 20, the last 10 years. Yeah, and look at the next one, Scott, if you want to read that one, but that, this pertains to people that do have mortgages. Exactly. 26.7% of all mortgaged homes have at least 50% equity. That means 50% loan to value, which is a very, very low number considering that to get the best loan out there, you only need to have 20% down and you can have 80% loan to value. And these people are now 50% loan to value 26.7% of the time. So I think Americans overall are doing pretty well managing their money in their homes. Exactly, exactly. Um, so we're gonna talk a little bit about month supply of inventory here. Uh, this is an indicator of what happened in 2006, 2007, 2008, 2010 compared to what's going, what's happening right now. And again, another reason why what happened then is completely different than what's going to be happening today. And a big part of it is month supply of inventory. So how many homes were available on the marketplace then than there were now? And today we're still below four. Um, it, so it, it's still technically from an inventory standpoint leans in the favor of a seller's market, which helps maintain property values. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. So let's scroll down to the most recent stats here. So every week Perfect. we update this. Um, right now, being April 21st, we had it updated on April 17th. So at the end of the week, we're going to have it updated again. But here we're looking at actives, homes under contract, closed. And the reason why we're doing this is that we're looking at the differences between supply and demand. Obviously, if there's an increase in actives, there's an increase in supply. If there's a, an increase in homes going under contract, 
that means there might be an increase in uh, demand as well and vice versa. If there's less homes going under contract, there might be a decrease in demand. And supply and demand always has a direct correlation with pricing. So this might give us a good indicator in the short term what we're seeing with pricing. So, Absolutely. Yeah. So if, if and this, this graph is awesome because as Lane says, it's updated every week. So we can really see pretty darn real time what's going on, which is nice. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. So if you look over on April 4th towards the left hand side, you're going to see the green a little bit higher than the yellow. So the green being the actives and the yellow being the homes that are under contract. That means that there, are, there were actually more homes coming to the market than going under contract. So that might mean a little bit of a slowdown in demand. And that's typically not what we're used to seeing. But then the following week, it tightened up again. And we were seeing just as many homes going under contract as they were going to uh, on the market. Uh, the two dips you see are weekend activity. So obviously homes really aren't going under contract or closing because escrows are closed on the weekends. And then the most recent week, we're starting to see the greens again pull a little bit away from the yellows. But I'm really excited to see some of the stats coming at the end of this week because, Scott, I don't know if you felt it, but over this last weekend, I definitely felt an increase in the volume of showings we've had for our listings. Well, as a team, we can certainly say that's the case, Lane. We were just talking you know, earlier this morning on our mastermind call across the board for our team members. We're seeing increased showings about fourfold in number of visitors through the properties just in the last seven days. So that's a fourfold increase in visitors, which we should see will be a definite increase in amounts of offers written. And if we think about it just at a base level, that's that many more people looking at homes that are making the efforts to safely under the current criteria, look at homes and saying, yes, we're, our hat's in the ring and we are buyers. Whether they buy one of our listings or not, it's a great indication that buyers are buying. Absolutely, absolutely. So let's go down to the last one here. I like to look at you know the homes that are back on the market, withdrawn, canceled, expired, or placed on hold, because this might be an activity that may be cause for concern. So if there's an increase in homes that are being canceled, withdrawn, or coming back on the market, that means that escrows are falling out. That means people are getting a little bit of scared, getting scared about what's going on in, in the current, with the current situation. Um, so, it, I mean, overall, almost all of them have a little bit of a downward trend, it looks like. So the green one right there is uh, back on the market. So we did see at the beginning of the month, a higher rate of homes going back on the market, being placed on um, hold, or even that huge increase you see there on the first for the canceled and expireds that's only because a lot of people have contracts that end at the end of the month anyway so you're going to see a big spike at, at the beginning at the first of every month but everything that we're seeing is having some sort of a downward trend right now which can be good news as far as homes uh, being placed on hold and coming back on the market and all that good stuff absolutely and then to reiterate again we update these numbers weekly and it's so great to see these charts because they're in real time and we can just really see where we've been where we are and get a little glimpse into where we're going. Exactly, exactly. So the next one, the next um, screen that I wanna share with you is this one right here. This comes straight from the Orange County Association of Realtors. And the reason why I wanna show you this one is actually because we, we heard from one of our great clients, Valerie, who wanted to help give us an indication of what pricing is doing and where pricing could be going. Um, so now the year over year stats that the Orange County Association of Realtors provides us, this is for the month of March. So the stay at home orders started basically at towards the end of March, like March 22nd, 23rd ish. So we only have about a week of what of activity of what happened during the stay at home orders, but this still gives us a good year over year indication of what yep. the market's doing. Year, year over year meaning. And it's right, right here in our own home of Orange County. And this is just so important for us to be looking at. And we wanna make sure that we're gonna be sharing with you when April comes out, because these are month over month. So it's not quite as uh, real time as what we've been showing you. But again, Lane, carry on. There is a little bit of a lag, but um, at the same time, so what we're looking at is what happened in March 2020 versus March 2019, right? And so yes. in, if you look at a couple of the, the important ones here, we're going to look at closed sales. Overall, closed sales are up. So there's more homes closing today than there were in March of 2019. Days on the market, homes are selling faster in March 2020 than they were in 2019. Median sales price and average sales price are both up. Uh, almost nine and ten percent for the two inventory month supply of inventory both are way way down uh, and then percentage of list price received is up as well so uh, sellers are getting closer to their asking price more so now than they were in March 2019 as well 
Absolutely. And an interesting take that I have on this is we know we've been in a terrific market pretty much for the last half a dozen years or so. So even if we were to say, look back at 2019 in March, last year was a wonderful year as well. So what I'm seeing, if we look at this very pragmatically, is even if we look next month in April and we start to see a little bit of slide back, we know we can look back at 2019 and that was an awesome time as well. So even with a little pullback, we're still looking pretty darn good. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And hopefully as, as we got, as we had a really nice weekend as far as showings go, and maybe as people feel a little bit more comfortable with what's happening out there, we might start to see a little bit of an uptick in volume again with showings and buyers and sellers both coming out and feeling confident and, and willing to buy and sell again and just start to get some activity going in the real estate marketplace. And I think we can just say too, Lane, again, just I want to say from our own perspective is that we see showings up across the board with our team's listings. We're seeing confidence uh, and energy from our sellers saying we want to turn the page and get on to the next chapter of our lives. I have to think that that's the microcosm of what our greater Orange County market is as a whole. So that does make me you know, somewhat excited. Yeah, absolutely. So as a stats guy, I love doing these type of videos. So hopefully we can uh, entertain you and keep you informed on a weekly basis. What we'll do is our weekly roundup or SNL show and just answer the question that we get asked more than any is how's the market so how's the market yeah and we want to make sure that we are answering that i know lane is a stats guy he's amazing he makes the stats so easy for me to interpret so i'm hoping that's the case for all of you out there watching i'm kind of a boots on the ground talking to people daily and here's something else that i want to share as we wrap up today is so many people now are working from home they're working more efficiently from home there's a lot of talk on the street out there that maybe some of these corporations are going to be restructuring things and people are going to be able to spend if not all their time per week working at home, more time working at home. And that means a shift in what people want in their home. So I'm kind of excited to see how people are going to be changing their housing needs with regards to more home offices at home and so forth and so on. I'm already hearing people talking to me about, gosh, maybe when we get a little bit um, past this, we're going to think about getting something different where we can have a home office for both husband and wife are both the main uh, partners in the, in the household. So I think we're going to be, see a shift that's going to be very good for residential real estate. We're, we're also hearing from some of our clients that were uh, new home buyers maybe just a couple years ago with a young family that are realizing that that space during quarantine time is a little small and they might need a little bit of an upgrade, maybe a little bit of a backyard. They, they need a little bit more room to go. So I, definitely as things start to lift a little bit, uh, there's going to be a, some changes and a lot of people are going to realize that they have more needs now yeah. as far as what they need for, for home. That's a great point, Lane. You know, when the average age of our homes in our marketplace in Orange County is actually upwards of 30 years in most areas, these are the homes I think they're going to have renewed demand from your very point. We have the larger rooms, the larger lots and so forth. And that is great news for our clients that do have equity and have been in their homes for a while as far as demand goes when it comes to their time to consider making a move. There's going to be buyers that are going to want your homes. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for watching. We get to, uh, stay tuned for next week when we do another SNL and answer your how's the market question. You got it. Thanks so much for watching and thank you, Lane, for all your hard work. Absolutely.